I knew I was gay at five. And I have an MFA in film and theater. I felt joy watching Better Nate Than Ever in the age of Don't Say Gay. Written and directed by Tim Fetterly, Better Nate Than Ever is the light, colorful, heartwarming, funny, schmaltzy, Disney, LGBTQ, teen musical comedy adventure that we need right now. How gay is better Nate than ever? One character performs a monologue from Designing Women that was originally performed by Dixie Carter. It just doesn't get gayer than that, folks. Uh, better Nate than ever follows 13-year-old Nate, who is a kid with dreams of becoming a Broadway musical theater star. After a disappointing school audition, uh, his best friend, Libby, masterminds a daring trip to New York City for the two of them to audition for Lilo and Stitch, the musical. But they must overcome a series of obstacles to make their Broadway dream a reality. If I had seen this movie as a kid, it would have changed my life in a very positive way. Nate does not say he's gay, but he drops wicked references in casual conversation and dreams of climbing down a fire escape like in West Side Story. Uh, the director told Variety, uh, Better Nate Than Ever is a semi-autobiographical love letter to theater kids. He ultimately wanted to create a family night movie, just like Adventures in Babysitting or Ferris Bueller's Day Off, but with an unapologetic LGBTQ theater kid at the center of it all. And he did just that. The structure and plot, uh, don't surprise. But better, late, better Nate than ever does have enough humor and heart to overcome uh, these faults. The script, despite being predictable, is pretty fantastic in the witty dialogue department. There are many clever asides in this movie, delivered by all the characters. So if you're a uh, musical theater fan, this musical comedy adventure is definitely for you. The actors are all outstanding, especially Ruby Wood as Nate. He's got the showmanship of Hugh Jackman <laughs> packed into a team. Uh, Ruby Wood is truly talented. This is a spoiler-free review. But just so you know, Ruby Wood has many incredibly memorable funny moments. Not to be outdone is Aria Brooks as Nate's best friend Libby. She delivers a very funny layered performance. Thankfully, the movie does not relegate her to the role of just aiding the male part. Libby is a very clever three-dimensional character with her own hopes, dreams, and desires. And her story inspires as well. Joshua Bassett is great as Nate's brother. Joshua recently came out as LGBTQ and has been open about the sexual abuse he suffered as a 10-year-old. Joshua told People Magazine that if somebody had talked to him about all of this stuff when he was a kid, it would have made a world of difference. And he's correct. I was also abused at the age of 10, and it would have made a world of difference if someone like Joshua had been around to tell their story. Uh, Lisa Kudrow is awesome as Nate's estranged Aunt Heidi. Her star power and comedic timing truly elevate better late than ever, and I am super grateful she's in this film. Visually, the movie is outstanding, with Declan Quinn's colorful, saturated cinematography and the snappy editing by Katie McQuarrie. The transitions between scenes were at times super cool. Uh, Better Nate Than Ever is a sincere film about finding your life and being true to yourself. And it's a great length at just an hour and a half. I believe a film like Better Nate Than Ever can make a bigger impact than a film like Brokeback Mountain. So take that, don't say gay. Better Nate Than Ever is sure to be a hit with pre-teens, teens, and families. I give Better Nate than ever five stars. If I was a young member of the LGBTQ, nothing could stop me from finding Better Nate than ever. It's full of joy. And I hope all that would benefit from seeing uh, Better Nate than ever get to see it. All right, y'all. Always remember, living well is the best way.